What's up, everybody? Jacob, with neutral name. It is now Desert Bloom, given to me by Hobo Scott because I can't seem to go outside to do anything without rain coming down. So he says I could go to Death Valley in the middle of summer and it would rain. And he's probably not wrong. But I was going to do a little bit of a, what I took with me on the Cumberland Trail on this last trip. I don't really think I've done a full gear loadout video. Uh, and this is pretty close to what I normally take. I took a couple extra little things that... Uh, I just wanted to see just for fun and to be honest I probably won't take them again I was still riding the ultralight line I think I was at right at 10 pounds so uh, I didn't really bother to weigh every little single thing out so you know give or take uh, right in that realm uh, but let's go ahead and get into it of course it all packed into the trusty Kumo here and let's go ahead and just start with the very outside of the Kumo with this little pocket up here a lot of people complain about because it isn't a huge pocket you're not gonna get a lot in here I find that you need to go ahead and fill this pocket before you fold it over uh, and what I normally do is this is my pocket for my ditty bag and you can see how tight it is even with the pack completely empty so my ditty bag, what do I have in here? Well, basically anything else I might need. Uh, there's my little $1 headlamp. I actually enjoyed this little guy, it was great. He weighs, uh, I think, half an ounce. And, it, you know, just for finding what I need to around camp, going to the bathroom at night, exactly what I wanted. Uh, spare sports cap for a smart water bottle. I thought we were gonna need one because I thought stop and go lost his for a second, but. This is nice to have. This also could uh, go on my Sawyer if I needed it to be. Little thing of Vaseline. I like having Vaseline for a lot of things. If you get a little cut, you just, you know, you're starting to get some uh, hot spots, some hiker hickeys, you can do that. Since it was wet and soggy, this is what I went ahead and lubricated my feet with just to kind of rejuvenate them as I sleep. That way I uh, prevent any kind of blisters, which no problems uh, as long as I do that. Now this, uh, I know some people are, are on the bandwagon of you know using some corners, not me. I want to feel fresh and clean after I need to uh, answer nature's call. So Charmin to go, I bought this a long time ago and I just keep this handy little tube with me and I just refill it with my own toilet paper because this also works as a dispenser when you're out there. And so on a trip like we were out there when it's raining, this is nice, keeps my toilet paper nice and dry and I can just have it ready and pull and tear as I need be. Uh, save no weight on toilet paper as far as I'm concerned. Go as much as you think you're going to need. I didn't need this. It just kind of lives in the bag. I, I mean, I could have took this out and saved a little bit of weight. This is the uh, Sawyer Deet. But I'm the kind of person, if I take this out, I'm going to forget to put it back in when I need it. So it just lives there. I don't care. It's fine. Many moons ago, when I used to work for the YMCA, uh, I got this little spray hand sanitizer. Uh, and I find I like it, uh, as opposed to the little bottle. It's a little bit lighter. And just So, I'm going to see if I can refill that somehow once I use it all up. Got a lot of just random little nonsenses here. Some, uh, you know, if your blood sugar's low, that's just your emergency, some little bandages of different types, BC powders of different type, uh, toothpaste powder, I like that, as opposed to taking me a little tube, my toothpaste powder there, spare lighter just because, um, some Dymode in case things get a little wild with the stomach, just lotions, some more bandages of various natures, uh, and Benadryl. In case of the sinuses go crazy during the summer months, I have a slight allergy to bees and a much more severe allergy to wasps. Uh, so this is always a must with me. I took my toothbrush out to, to clean it. It's normally sitting there too. It's just a little travel brush with the, where it fits its head inside the handle. Nothing spectacular. I haven't sawed off a handle of a full brush or anything crazy like that. Uh, and that's all I have on the ditty bag, and that's all I ever seem to need. On my outside pocket of the Kumo here, 
it's where I tend to keep all anything that I'm going to consider to be wet. So on a trip like that, it's definitely going to be my tarp. This is the UGQ Winter Dream 12, 12 foot tarp. Didn't get anything special. I don't have any special pullouts or anything. Weighs about a pound. I really like this tarp. It's nice. I just close the doors up. Uh, I've got my own little space in there. I don't have to worry about how bad the wind's going to come in or the rain's going to come in. I, I know I'm protected. I used to do the snake skins. I know it's super popular still. I don't know. I just it felt like it was making everything bulky. And I just honestly didn't really fully utilizing that much. I normally, when I get to camp, I just go ahead and have my tarp set up so I don't have to think about it later. So I just kind of made this stuff stack. It's way too big. I mean, this thing will compress much farther down than that. And I normally do squish it down into the bag, but I do need to make a, a much smaller, more compact stuff stack. Probably something out of mesh. Um, that way some of the water can escape. It's not obviously going to dry out in my pack because it's all bundled up in there, but uh, this material is a little bit waterproof itself. So I definitely need something different, but for the time being, it gets the job done. So that lives in there. This little shipping bag, I wanna say I got this with my dream hammock. I honestly don't remember where I got this little, this little shipping bag. It's fairly, you know, it's got some, some oomph to it. So I went ahead and brought this along as opposed to a little piece of tarp or Tyvek. It's incredibly light. I, I set this down on that wet log uh, in front of the fire so that I can keep my butt dry on that log. I put it down right outside the hammock so I've got somewhere to step. And when I was hiking, this little chamois towel, I definitely knew I was going to need this because uh, the feet were going to be nasty and wet and needed to be dried off. I would just go ahead and put that in there so to keep it dry and I would have quick access to this for whatever reason that I might needed it. And so that lived on the outside as well. And then you get to see the ridiculously large, ridiculously blue jacket poncho, the 3FUL. It does fit down into this little crazy guy as big as it is. And so that lives out there, just so it's quick, easy access, uh, especially if I'm taking it on and off, which I did a little bit on that particular trip. It's just easy to get to. And it can shed a little water back there if it stops raining. So that lives outside. Now, when we get into the, obviously in the side pockets, I'm not gonna show you, it's just smart water bottles. Uh, everyone does it, so nothing new there. On the inside of the pack, right on top. Whew. I've just got this four liter Sea to Summit uh, dry sack. It's way too heavy. I need to get me a better food bag situation. Uh, but this is what I use for my food bag. I can fit three to four days of food in here. Uh, pretty, pretty easily. But I would, would probably, this is somewhere where I could save I know it's literally ounces, but at this point, that's what I've got to save is ounces. But I would like something waterproof. I do like it when I'm hanging it up if uh, it's gonna storm at night. Normally everything's packaged and it's gonna be good to go, but who wants a bag full of water when you don't have to have it? So that normally sits right on top. So also had this enamelware mug. I like this mug, it's kind of nostalgic. I don't take it, but uh, Stop and Go did tell me that he had hot cocoa. Uh, that he was going to share at camp. So, uh, somebody's gonna let you have hot cocoa, you go ahead and make sure that you've got something to drink it out of. So this little guy came along for that exact purpose. Inside the Kumo, I normally do a trash bag. I know trash compactor bags are the, the go-to. I just haven't bought any yet, so trash bag, that's what I do. Uh, right on top of that, it's where all my other things that need to be dry, and that's usually just my top quilt, under quilt, and some clothing. So, start with the under quilt here. Normally I'll just stuff stuff this. I decided to try it in its uh, sack here to see if that would just kind of keep it a little more orderly because this is a synthetic. It's the garbage from Arrowhead Equipment. I do like this at $100. I don't think you can beat this under quilt. 
but it, it, that's about as small as it can pack. So it does get a little unruly if you don't have something to contain it. So I tried it in this this time as opposed to just stuffing it down. It did seem to work better. Uh, it kept it a little more managed. So I went ahead and put this at the very, very bottom. So I had a nice little layer. On top of that is, you've probably seen this with a few other people. It's this Aegis Max uh, top quilt slash sleeping bag. I mean, I actually kind of like it. It's sewn through, so I know some people are like, Ugh. I think I spent less, actually I know I spent less than a hundred bucks on this thing. They claim it's rated down to 20. Whether it is or not, I could not say. I sleep a little warm on the top side. So, you know, mileage is gonna vary on all of those things. For me, it's fine, I like it. It weighs a little under a pound or right at a pound. Uh, it will stuff down to about yay. I just go ahead and stuff it in the pack. I don't worry with the uh, trying to fight it back into the little tiny stuff sack that it comes with. So that's my top quilt. In there with it is Pat Patagonia Puffy. Was very happy to have this thing. This was my really sole piece of warmth, warmth to be outside around camp. And uh, it did get a little cool. You know, 38, it's not freezing by any means, but I was happy to have this. And I actually slept in it, it felt really nice. I also had some wool socks. These are just generic wool socks. Maybe smart wool, I don't know. Smart wool is normally labeled. I think these are just generic. Uh, if you watch the video, I rocked out some sandals. Like in the zero shoe sandals, which I did not grab. But, uh, so I didn't have any socks on throughout the day and I knew I was going to vaseline the feet up and I didn't want that inside of my top quilt there. So A, this allowed my feet to warm up and B, just kept all that uh, vaseline off of the inside of my top quilt. So those looked in there and then my base layers, AKA sleep clothes, uh, they run dual purpose obviously. This is this little shirt here. I got it for a couple Christmases ago. This is, what is this? Uh, Heat Max or something like that. So it's some weird off brand. I believe you get it at Kohl's. Super thin, surprisingly warm for what it is. Uh, it's got the deepest neckline of all time though, which is an interesting decision, but hey, keeps you warm. And then my tights. These are just some generic Adidas tights. I actually got these from the women's section. I went ahead and found some that were, uh, not didn't have a curve cut, they were just like a very neutral cut. These things were about $20 cheaper than the men's version. I think the cheapest I could find, you know, out and about in the wild was about 50 bucks for men's tights and I wasn't about to spend that. I think I got these for like 25 to 30 over in the women's section and they fit just fine and they're tight, who cares, they, whatever. All right, so let's get to the actual sleepy sleep. Oh, the Dream Hammock Sparrow, AKA the Chokehold. This thing was awesome. I've been having a hard, hard time sleeping out there as of late. I like to toss and turn at night. I like to sleep on the side. Uh, a lot of rolling around. I did that plus some. And this hammock was perfect. Uh, it almost encouraged me to curl up in a little ball on my side and go to sleep. That's how amazing it was. Room for days. It's got an amazing little uh, ridgeline organizer. I used the top cover. I'd never used the top cover before. I think in those particular situation where it was a little bit windy, a little bit damp, that was tailor-made for a top cover. I actually really, really enjoyed it. Ended up sleeping for like 12 hours out there, which... I don't do at home. I don't do in the wild for sure. But uh, this guy, the Dream Hammock Sparrow, uh, very, very happy with that. For suspension, if I can grab it, this tangled mess. Uh, it's just this Dyneema tree strap 
with a whoopee. I ended up, I've got some toggles for it, but uh, these carabiner here weigh just a hair less than actually the toggles I was using. And since I can multi-purpose with this beaner, uh, I went with that instead. What I think I'm gonna do in the future though, I might try out Dutchware's beetle buckle system. Just because I'm lazy. I, I don't necessarily enjoy messing with the big whoopies. Not my favorite. So occasionally I'll send a, uh, I'll stuff these in a little, little sack. On this trip, I just wadded these bad boys up, shoved it down the pack on the outside of the trash bag uh, just to keep any kind of water that might be on these off of all my dry gear. Now this is one of those nonsense items that I brought. I don't know why, but uh, I just wanted to play with it. I've had it forever. Wanted to see if I wanted to get back to using it. Turns out I don't. I don't. I didn't enjoy fiddling with it. It didn't really seem to add any value. Luckily, it didn't really add a ton of weight. And that's the Eno underbelly. It's just a simple gear sling. It's like a little baby hammock that sits under your hammock that you can put all your stuff in in quick access. When I was doing lightweight backpacking where I had a ton more gear, this made a lot of sense and it was super useful. Now that I've got more into ultralight, which means I don't have that much gear, it really didn't do anything for me. That's one thing I like about ultralight more so than just the weight is the fact that everything when I'm at camp comes out of the bag. Uh, the bag basically ends up being empty. And then when I pack up, it really just goes right back in. So there's not a lot of extra things just sitting around. So this ended up being a useless piece of gear. Uh, and it won't be coming back out, most likely. Uh, maybe on a random canoe trip or something. All right. So now, let, let's get to this. The fanny pack. I am a huge fan of this fanny pack. Not necessarily this one in particular, but just having a fanny pack. So for this huge pocket right up here. I went ahead and in the Ziploc bag I've got Kindle Paperwhite uh, because nights are long in the winter time so I wanted something to read and then I've got my power bank for the phone. Also in this huge pouch is I would put all my snacks and my lunch for the day and have those all right there ready to go. That way if I wanted to walk through which we did we walked through lunch I don't have to worry about stopping, getting the pack off. I can just reach in, eat, munch, throw the trash right back in here. I'm good to go. On the front pouch here, you guys, a little bit stuffing it in, but it's fine. Water filtration. I've got the Sawyer Squeeze, full size here with the sports cap. The uh, two liter gigantic bag here, and then a one liter bag cut off. Uh, in case I need to use it as a scoop. I think I'm probably going to switch this out to a knock Vecto system here in the near future. Uh, I mean, these are okay. They get the job done. They're just not my favorite. Uh, I do have a Sawyer Mini, but uh, impatience. I like the flow rate of this. Uh, so it wins out. And then there's a little, little bitty back pouch here. Another lighter, just in case. And then this little guy. Uh, I can't remember the name of this Swiss Army knife. The Vitronox, maybe? I used to be one of those people, who, you know, would take a huge knife, something you could process wood down with. Now it's just this little guy. All I ever really need it for is to maybe cut a mill open, a bag of mill open, something. Uh, and so for that, these little scissors end up being way more valuable than any blade and of course I've got tweezers and a toothpick on there so those functions get used more often than not and that way is basically nothing that's what I had as far as weight wise on me now as far as clothing I carried on me this REI foam it's like a runner style hat I really like this um, super lightweight breathes well yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. It's a foam runner's hat. It's the cat's pajamas. 
a knockoff buff. This is something I got from Academy, I believe. So it was their, their brand of buff. Just wore it around my neck. That, you know, carotid artery here, keeping that warm, makes the body feel warm. And so when I was hiking, I had that around my neck. Felt pretty good at nighttime since nothing to keep me warm up there. Just put it on my head just to keep the chill off the, uh, the chrome dome there. And that was nice. Next to my body, this is just a Nike Drymax uh, Performance T. Just had that on. And then over that, this is technically, this is the, a blue hoodie. Let's see if I can do it here. Super thin. It's technically a sun shirt. So, with a hood. Uh, so it's not really designed to keep you warm. But when I layer it with that other shirt... I do okay. I do fine. I just really need something to kind of knock the wind off me. That's why I like that thin hood. I don't overheat. They're both tech material, so they both wick sweat super well. Uh, and that little combo has done me well into, obviously, the 30s. Down on the old Legos. Ex officio. I mean, everyone's got their brief of choice. I like those. And then these are just some cheap, what is this brand, Rowling's from uh, running shorts from Walmart. Uh, tech material, they quick dry. They used to have a liner in there. I tried the liner a few times. It was just weird and baggy and it just didn't feel comfortable. So I cut that out. Uh, and I've been really happy with them ever since I've done that. And I guess last but not least was, uh, like I say, I had the Zero Shoe Sandals. I had the Z Trek, if you want to look those up. It's a minimalist sandal. I know I did say in the video that I ended up hurting my foot. People are probably going to point out, well, you shouldn't have been wearing sandals, idiot. Uh, I mean, the right foot was fine. I had injured that left foot previous, uh, and it was probably going to hurt regardless of what I had on my feet. Uh, it was just a case of getting out there a little too soon. So, it, it is what it is. But I, I probably will do that combo again in the future. I liked it. Uh, my feet did get wet on several occasions. And obviously, they just dried right out. Didn't find it to be too cold by any stretch of the imagination. Especially having uh, the ability to warm them up at camp. And I do have some down socks if it got colder. Uh, that I would take in place of the wool socks to wear inside of the hammock. And then it wasn't on me, but I was carrying it basically the whole time, and that is what I'm filming on. I've just got this cheap little tripod, and I use my iPhone uh, 8 to film with. So, didn't really ever pack that up, just held it in my hand. If I needed to, to have some hands free, I'd just take the Kumo, these little shoulder straps here, just right there. Because I, really, I don't ever know what to do with these. I don't really have much. Every now and then I might put a snack in there, but with the fanny pack... I don't need it, so I would use those to hold it if I just needed my hands free for a moment or two. That's literally all I needed, and that was actually ended up being too much, too much gear. Uh, but in the future, probably, you know, this or that, in and out, and uh, that'll take me down pretty low. Tennessee normally has pretty mild temperatures, so I uh, feel pretty confident in that. I'm looking forward to summer, where I can take even less. So, uh, any suggestions you might need? I know I didn't show a trial or anything like that. I, it was a little cheeky because I knew Stop and Go had a trial, so I didn't, uh, I didn't take one this time. Um, and those little things you can do. If you're hiking with a buddy and you know they've got some gear that can be shared, eh, you know, maybe you're the one who saves you an ounce or two and, and doesn't take that piece of gear. Uh, and he didn't mind, so hopefully we'll get out there. Probably not until February, but I'm looking forward to getting out there and we'll uh, maybe have some new gear to play with. I know Stop and Go is making some... Uh, some down under quilts and we'll be excited to show those off in the near future.